There are three typical mistakes that you can make when you are running an A-B test. All three come from one root cause, and that's emotions. I know, it's funny to talk about emotions in a data science course. But we are all human, we can't ignore the fact that our emotions affect our actions, even in data analytics and A-B testing. But I've talked about this before. When we work a lot on a new version of our website, email or advertisement, we start to fall in love with the new concept. It happens quite often and it's totally normal. We want the new version to win, so if we see the slightest chance that we were right, we want to stop the A-B test and rush to our conclusions. It's how our brain is wired, but that's not how experiments work. You have to be very strict and pragmatic. I specifically recommend that you define a stopping rule before you start your A-B test. You can calculate the expected duration of your test by using all the things we have discussed so far in the course, and let's say it's three weeks. So all you have to do is to set a simple stopping rule that says that you will stop your test after exactly three weeks and not sooner. Three weeks, and before that, you won't change anything, you won't stop your test, and you won't try to predict the outcome of your A-B test. As I said, you have to be very strict and very pragmatic. With that in mind, let's see the three typical mistakes. Number one, stopping the A-B test too early. Never stop your A-B test early on. If you have decided that you want to run your experiments for three weeks, for instance, stick with it and only stop it when it has indeed run for three weeks, even if you see that your version B seemingly beats version A right in the first week of the test. Again, your mind wants to trick you. You will feel good about your version B But sometimes it can happen that after a good first week, your results will change by the end of the second week. That's natural variance. Even more, occasionally it also happens that in the first days of your test, version B seems to be winning, and it also shows 95% statistical significance. Then it goes down, and your significance also goes back below 80% or 70% on the next day. Remember the concepts of false positives? that momentary 95% statistical significance was only a false positive. This doesn't happen quite often, but it happens sometimes. For that reason, I usually like to extend my stopping rules with one more condition. My statistical significance level has to be above 95 or 99%, whatever I specified before the test, for at least the last three consecutive days before I stop the experiment. The second typical mistake changing anything in an ongoing experiment. Remember, you are running A-B tests to learn. So if you change, for instance, the design of your version B during the experiment, just because it seemingly doesn't perform as well as you have expected, that's a huge mistake. First off, we discussed this several times, so I won't go deeper into it this time, but before any conclusions, you will have to wait for statistically significant results. But let's say that you have that, and by the end of your test, your version B loses with 99% statistical significance. Remember, a losing version B is not a failure. That's useful information. It means that your hypothesis didn't work, but you will be able to use this knowledge in your future A-B tests. However, if you change anything in your ongoing experiment before you could draw your conclusions, you will lose this information, and just in general, you will mess up all the results you could have gotten from your A-B test. It's also crucial not to change the audience distribution. I see people doing this often. Version B seems to be winning, so they change the distribution of the experiment from 50-50 to a 20-80 split. They say the more people see version B, the more people will convert better, right? Well, yeah, sure, but again, it will completely mess up your A-B test results. Besides the obvious statistical significance issue, you will have to deal with another statistical problem called the Simpsons paradox. I won't go into detail here, but if you want to learn more about the Simpsons paradox, I've added a detailed article about it below this video. But the general rule is you should not change anything in an ongoing A-B test, neither the design nor the audience distribution. Otherwise, you will get fake results. And the third typical mistake, checking the interim results of the experiments on a daily basis. I get it. Running an A-B test is exciting. Still, the best practice is not to check your A-B test results every day. Ideally, you will check it only a few times while it's running. 
right after you start your experiment, just to see that everything's fine with your tracking and that the conversion data is indeed being collected. And then once in every three or four days, just to make sure nothing's broken. And then only after you have stopped your experiment. The more times you check your experiment, the more opportunity you give yourself to get influenced by your emotions. And you want to avoid that, right? By the way, I bet that you won't follow this last best practice, at least for the first few of your experiments, but that's all right. But when you will get more advanced and when you will run five or 10 experiments next to each other, you will start to appreciate this rule more and more. I can guarantee that. Okay, if I want to summarize this video in one sentence, it's this. Set your stopping rules before you start your A-B test and then do nothing until you actually stop it. That's easy, right? Well, if you don't let your emotions lead you, and if you stay very strict and pragmatic, it will be easy indeed.